So the first topic in electricity and magnetism is static electricity. Basically, what happened? What is the origin of this static electricity? The term static means in this chapter, basically, you will learn about the charges when they are at rest. So static means rest. And electricity is thing which is related to the charges. So in this topic, you will learn about when the charges are stationary or charges are at rest. So first thing, the basic concept of atom should be there to understand this static electricity. So an object can store electric charge and the charges, if the charges cannot flow, what we call them, we call them as static charges. And what is the origin of these charges? How the object can have charge? So from where these charges are coming from? These charges are coming from a tiny particle such as atom. What atom consists of? As we know, atom consists of the nucleus. You can see here, this is a structure of an atom. This is a nucleus, the central part. Inside Sir, what's the new topic, static electricity. So inside the nucleus, you have proton and neutron. What is the charge of proton? Positive. Neutron does not have any charge. Net charge is zero. And what is the charge of electron? So electron is negative. So a material, I will share the, this presentation so you can copy uh, the things which you want to. So main thing is, you're understanding what matter or important. So an atom consists of neutron, proton, and electron. These neutron and protons are inside the nucleus. And electrons are revolving around the nucleus in a definite region. We call them as orbit or shells. So what happened? If you have a material, example, and this material consists of atoms, Uh, this is a nucleus. I will draw the full atom. This is a nucleus. And this ring is representing the orbit, the shell. Inside the nucleus, you have neutron and proton. And around the nucleus, you have electrons. Neutron, proton, and electron. Same thing, neutron, proton, electron, neutron, proton, and electron. What will happen? Example, if these electrons will go out from the or atom, so what charge will be there on this material? If these electrons will go out, if atoms loses these electrons, what will be the charge on, of the material? So if something is losing, if something is losing electron, if, if it's a loss of electron, you will have more proton. So when you have more proton, so material will be positively charged. And opposite will happen. If electrons are added, if this material take electron, So if electron transfer to the material, what will be the charge of the material? If it has majority or most of them electron, so the charge will be negative. So why a material is getting a charge? Because of it contain atom and atom is having neutron, proton and electron. 
So if an atom lose electron, the charge on the atom will be positive. And if an atom gain the electron, then the charge of atom will be on the atom will be negative. So it will become an ion. So when atom loses electron, it will be positive ion. And if atom gain electron, it will be negative ion. So how we can charge an object, like example, if you want to make an object charge, as we discussed already, there are two types of charges, positive charges are there or protons are there and negative charges are there or electrons are there. How we can charge an object, there are two ways. If you want to charge an object, there are two ways by which we can charge an object. One is by rubbing. Another one is by induction. These are the two ways by which you can charge an object. What is the meaning of rubbing here? What happened? We also call that technique as a friction. If you have two objects, example, this is material one. If this is material one and the blue shade is representing material two. Both consist of atoms. These spheres are representing atoms. Atom contain neutron, proton, and electron. Electron can move out from the uh, atom easily because they are away from the nucleus. Now what you are doing, you are rubbing these two surfaces over each other. So when you are rubbing the two surfaces over each other, what happened? Because the two surfaces have friction. So due to friction, heat is produced. So due to friction, it produces heat. Heat is a form of energy and the heat produced is absorbed by the electrons in an atom. So when you are rubbing the two surfaces, it is producing a heat energy and this heat energy the heat which is produced here is absorbed by the electrons in an atom. So this is a heat energy which is released. This heat energy is absorbed by the electron which are there in the atom. And when these electrons absorb this energy, these electrons will jump from one material to another because one material can lose electron easily compared to the other one. So the electron jumps from one material to another. Example, uh, this one is material A. The pink shade is, red shade is representing material A and blue shade is representing material B. If electron jumps from material A to material B, what will be the charge of material B? Electron jumps from material B to material A. What will be the charge of material B? So material B will get a positive charge because it is losing electron. And as electron jumps to material A, material A will have more electrons. So what will be the charge? The charge will be negative. So electron jumps from one material to another, one material, one material will get a positive charge, another one will get a negative charge. And this method of a charging, we call that as charging by rubbing or charging by friction.
Yeah, same thing. This can be done. You can use, you can charge a balloon by rubbing with your hairs. So how a balloon get, is getting a charge? The same concept is electrostatic charging, which is done by friction. There are two types of atoms. Material A is having atoms, material B is having atoms. And electrons have different attraction in different materials. So the example, this is material A and blue one is representing material B. This is the atom of material A, the nucleus. And this one is a shell in which you have electron. Same thing for a material B. This is an atom, which can, this is a nucleus of an atom for material B. And this is the orbit, the shell. I'm just drawing electrons here to explain the idea. Example, material A is having electron, material B is also having electron. Initially, both materials are neutral. But what happened when you rub them together, the rubbing will produce heat energy. So the, the heat energy is absorbed by atoms of A and heat energy is absorbed by atom of B. But the electrons in A and electrons B are not having a same attraction because the size of atom is different. Some atoms, electron are closer because the number of the shells occupy depending on the attraction between the nucleus and electron. So some materials, electrons are closer to the nucleus, so they are tightly packed together. And some materials, electrons are far away from the nucleus, so they have loose bonding. So as they have loose bonding, what happened? Example, you can see here, material B is having greater distance of electron from the nucleus. So when we rub, Material B can lose its electron and the two surfaces are in contact. So as they're in contact, the electron travel from one surface to another. So the surface which lose electron will get a positive charge and the surface which take electron will get a negative charge. So there are atoms on material A and there are atoms on material B, but most of electrons are in material A and most of the positive ions are in material B. This method, this technique, of rubbing the surface is known as electrostatic friction or charging by friction. Is it clear? When two surfaces are rubbed together, electrons jump from one surface to another. And this is simply called electrostatic friction or charging by friction. Any question or doubt related to this? The second method is called charging by induction. What does it mean? In induction, an object is charged by the help of another charged object. So when object is charged by the help of another charged object, we call that as induction. So what happened? Look, you have a material, okay? And this material is also consists of atoms. This is a nucleus of an atom. And there are electrons which are revolving. So this is, 
this is an atom which contain neutron proton and electron now what is the meaning of induction an object is charged by the help of another charge object we call that as induction what does it means example if i bring a charged material closer to this i bring a charged material example i bring a positive charged material closer to this so if i bring a positive charged material closer to this what happen electrons are negative and the nucleus is positive so an atom this is an atom the nucleus of an atom and this is a shell you have neutron proton and electrons if i bring a positive charge here what will happen this positive charge will attract electron so when this positive charge will attract electron so most of the electron will come this side and this will repel the because when the electron is lost when the electron is lost from the atom what it create it create electron and it create a positive ion so when we bring a positive charge example we bring a positive charge what or positive charge object as we know unlike charges or opposite charges will attract so electrons experience the attraction and these electrons will come out so as these electrons will come out what we are left with we are left with positive ion and electron and when we are left with positive ion and electron so what happen that the material will have a distribution of the charge that one side there are more electrons or negative charge and one side other side it will have more positive ions because like charges repel each other so positive charge experience repulsion from this positive charge rod so when we create a distribution of the charge within the object what we call we call this method as induction so induction is the object is charge or object in a inside an object we separate the charge by the help of another charge object so in induction actually we don't have to touch this we just bring a, a positive charge rod closer and it will create a distribution of a charge we call induction but in a friction actually the two surfaces should have a contact with each other each other so when the two surfaces having a contact with each other and we rub them together so it produce heat due to friction and that heat is allowing the electron to jump from one atom to another is it clear the concept the difference between induction and i will give more examples but this is a basic concept of induction and friction the difference between them so simply the difference between if you want to charge an object if you want to make an object charge so simply what you can do there are two methods to make a charge object one is by rubbing another one is by induction so in rubbing what we do we take two surfaces initially uncharged two different surfaces and we rub them together so as we rub the two surfaces together so what it produces it produces heat and this heat which is produced is absorbed by the atoms 
and when the atoms absorb these atoms will lose electron one of the at one of the material will lose electron first depending on which one have a strong bonding and which one is having a weak bonding so electron absorb energy from the due to heat which is produced and these electron jumps or move from one material to another so when the electron move from one material to another so what happen we have two objects being charged one is positive charge and the other one is negative charge so material which lose electron most of positive charges are there and material which gain electron most of them are negative but what is induction induction is an object is charged by the help of another charge object as we know like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other so if you have one material and in this material you have atoms i'm drawing the only atoms here okay uh, when i'm saying atom means it's it has nucleus neutron proton and electrons are revolving if i bring a charge object already charge object it can be positive or negative example if i bring a positive charge rod so when i bring a positive charge rod what will happen positive charge rod will attract the nucleus because the nucleus is positively charged sorry the positive charge rod will repel the nucleus and attract the electron by mistake so because unlike charges attract so the nucleus experience a repulsion and electron experience a attraction so as these electron experience a the attraction these electrons from atom will come out and most of the electrons will be here so as most of the electrons are one side and the side which is losing electron what will be the charge on them they will have positive charge so what it create it create a distribution of the charge so when distribution of the charge is created that you have one side positive charge and another side you have negative charge and there is a charge rod next to this so what we call this method when we create a distribution of the charge within the material we call that as induction is it clear the basic concept of induction and friction charging by friction if you place a negative charge rod then opposite will happen that electrons being repelled this can be done with a negative charge rod electrons will be repelled and positive ions will be attracted in detail i will explain both process in detail now but this is the first thing i will give you introduction of charging by rubbing and charging by induction you can have this experience of induction and friction example what happen um in winter normally it happen in winter or a dry weather like sometime when you are touching a metal object you get an electric shock what is the reason why you get an electric shock so what is the reason why you get a shock when you touch a metallic objects because normally what happen even when you are touching a car door you are also getting a shock so what is the reason for that because as you are moving you are in a friction and air is dry 
So example, if this is you, a person, and as a person is moving, so example, a person is moving towards left-hand side. So what will be the direction of the air flow? Air will move around it. So means there is a fric there is a friction between the air and the person cloth or the body. So due to this air friction, a human body get charged. The electron actually transfer from air to a human body. And this happen in a dry weather. It happen commonly, like frequently, as compared to moist weather so what happened the air will get a positive charge and a person will get a negative charge why because the electron transfer from air to a person body now a person is having a negative charge so when you touch any object metallic object for example if you are holding a door knob So when you try to open a door knob, you are touching a metal object. So moment you touch the metal object, these electrons transfer to the metal, and when these electrons transfer, they produce a spark, and you will produce or you will get a electric shock. So actually, a human body also get charged due to air friction, and the moment when you touch any metallic object, why touching a metallic object is giving you an electric shock? because metals are conductor they allow the charge to pass through them so the moment you touch any metallic object you will get an electric shock So there are two types of charges like this is example charging by friction how you can charge an object by a friction it involves both things and this is a you will observe like example a balloon is there and you rub this balloon with any plastic object even you rub with your hairs so as you rub the balloon with your hairs what happened the electron actually jump from one surface to another so the at the surface which lose electron what will be the charge positive so here we will get a positive charge and the at electron transfer from one material to another so what will be the charge here on this material it will be negatively charged so when you are rubbing two surfaces with each other the electron actually jump from one surface to another and this method is called electrostatic friction if you place this balloon close to the wall or place on the wall what you will observe you will find this balloon will stick with the wall or stick to the wall so when i place this balloon closer so the to the charges uh, so what happened yeah because what happened when you bring closer to a wall so it produce electrostatic induction and this will not remain for a longer period of a time why because the material lose its charges so one side it will be positive another side it will be negative so balloon will remain stick for some time and then it will lose its charge and it will fall to the ground so both things happen here one is electrostatic friction when you rub the two surfaces 
we call electrostatic friction but when you charge an object or distribute the charge within the material by the help of another charge object we call that as electrostatic induction is it clear for example you have a balloon which is not charged and you take a ruler or a scale which is also uncharged and you rub them over each other when you rub the two surfaces what happen it will produce heat because of friction and due to this friction the electron the heat absorb heat is produced which allow the electron to jump from one material to another so when electron jump from one material to another the material which lose electron will have a positive charge and the material which gain electron will get a negative charge what we call this we call that as electrostatic friction and if you place this balloon closer to the wall so this balloon is now negatively charged and you place closer to the wall so as you place this balloon closer to the wall what happen it create a distribution of the charge so positive charges one side and negative charges on another side and unlike charges will attract each other that's why the balloon will be in contact with the wall for some time and when a distribution of the charge is created this is called this is called electrostatic induction how you will know which material will lose and which will gain you don't have to learn this order you just have to understand the idea that if a material loses electron will be positive charge and if the material gain electron it will be negatively charged so example you rub a balloon with a piece of cloth and then hold it near but do not touch a thin stream of water like example what you will observe you will observe the direction in which the water is flowing will change what is the reason why the direction will change as you rub the balloon with a piece of cloth so when you rub the balloon with a piece of cloth example a balloon get a negative charge you are not touching the what stream of a water so but what happen when you bring a negative charge rod so positive charges one side and negative charges another side and these positive charges as they are attracted towards the negative charge or balloon that's why the stream of the water will change its direction so two things when you are rubbing the surface it's friction charging by friction but when you are not touching the object then we call that as induction sir how how does the water has positive charges how how does the water have positive charges how the water is having a positive charge as you studied in chemistry the water is h2o or honh okay so when you bring a charge rod like example you bring a balloon closer to this what it create it create a distribution of the charge it will break the water into hydrogen plus and oh minus minus yeah and these oh minus ions are one side and hydrogen on another side as they are attracted so that's why the stream of the water is changing its direction so why doesn't it repel i didn't get it is repelled but the thing is because you have a greater amount of negative charge here so it means there is a greater attraction that's why the net movement is towards the balloon because this is having more negative charges when you create a distribution example there are three positive 
there are equal amount of positive yeah charges. equal amount of positive and negative charges but what happen because there is a there are greater number of negative charges so attraction is more and this attraction cause the water molecules or stream of a water to change the direction because there is a greater charge more negative charges so this repulsion is there but there are few only three negative what happen you have three positive which are closer to the negative charge so as they are closer to the negative charge what happen there they have more attraction because they are closer to each other negative charges are away from the other negative so they have less repulsion so they have more attraction and less repulsion that is why yeah, the stream of it. the water changes its direction if it was having equal distribution then the stream of the water will not change the direction like if there equal distance between the positive and negative charges yes the attractive force is more or stronger than the repulsive force here because the positive charge you can see that the positive charges are closer as compared to negative charges is it clear this idea yes sir so example when a cloth rubbed with a perfect rod it's a type of a glass example it become positively charged before rubbing you can see before rubbing both have the equal number of the like equal number in that sense if you have five positive five negative this one is having six positive so six negative so what is the net charge on cloth resultant charge zero zero what is the net, net charge on a perfect rod zero zero, zero. but when you rub them together as you rub them together like some of the electron jumps so what will be the net charge why? resultant yes why why, why do they jump because when you rub them together it produce heat and heat is a form of energy which is absorbed by the electron and the material in which electron are weakly bounded this material will lose electron that's why the electron jumps from one material to another So when you so in rub this them, case the cloth has more electrons. More yeah, in this case the cloth, cloth is there. having more electrons. So what is the net charge on the cloth? Minus. And what is the net charge on rod? Positive. so the rod as it loses electrons so net charge is positive so at the net charge